The Witcher spin-off Blood Origin came out recently. And this show is a great example of something that I wanted to talk about for a long time. And that is how Netflix turned The Witcher from this interesting world, which is very unique in the fantasy genre, and turned it into something so generic and milk toast that most people are just uninterested when they see the promotional material. Gary from Nerdrotic actually described this exact thing in one of his recent videos. Blood Origin. Never heard of it? Don't recognize this as The Witcher? I don't blame you because honestly, I couldn't tell the difference between this, Willow, The Rings of Power, and Wheel of Time. It just looks like a very diverse group of no-name adult pretenders in rags. Now The Witcher without Henry Cavill is going to look just like Blood Origins, or Wheel of Time, or Willow, or Rings of Power. They're all interchangeable, and I want you to think about this again to bring up the mythical modern audience in their never-ending quest to search for that audience and be different by subverting cultural norms, they all look the same. This is exactly what I've been thinking. To me, Blood Origin looks just like your typical diverse party of heroes from Dungeons and Dragons. I noticed that all recent fantasy shows are doing this for some reason. It's like Hollywood found out only recently about D&D thanks to projects like Stranger Things and Critical Role, and they think that this is how every fantasy should look like. That's the reason why Blood Origin is interchangeable with every one of those recent shows like Willow, Rings of Power, Wheel of Time, Cursed or Letter for the King. Because they are all trying to be like D&D or Game of Thrones, instead of being their own thing. And this is something that I've been saying since Netflix started releasing all of their Witcher projects. They all look like a discount version of some different fantasy. The main Witcher show is a discount Game of Thrones, Nightmare of the Wolf is a discount Castlevania, and now Blood Origin is a discount Dungeons and Dragons. And the problem is that The Witcher is not like any of these fantasy worlds. I want to show you this clip where the producer of Blood Origin says something that just sounds wrong to me, and it sums up everything that Netflix has done to the whole Witcher brand. We're not just gonna be filming on set. This is an epic show, so we need epic. You know, something like the earth has vomited up mountains out of nowhere. Yeah. That'll do. The Witcher is not supposed to be epic. Yes, it has some epic moments like the Tanet Coop, the Battle of Brenna, or Triss doing her magic spell during a pogrom in Rivia, and so on but events like these are pretty sparse in the books. They don't happen very often, which is great, because when they do happen, they feel even more special and epic. But other than that, the story and the world of The Witcher is pretty down-to-earth and mundane, which I love. Unfortunately, Netflix sees it only as another generic epic fantasy. It's obvious that after the success of Game of Thrones, they wanted a show like that of their own, and The Witcher was their attempt at that. But because they are trying to make it look like something else, they got rid of the unique atmosphere of that world, which differentiated The Witcher from every other generic fantasy. The reason why I fell in love with The Witcher is that it was kinda the opposite of every other epic fantasy world which I knew growing up. Typical fantasy is usually trying to be as fantastical, otherworldly and grandiose as possible to help you forget our boring world for a moment and get you dreaming. But The Witcher went in the opposite direction. Even though it's still a fantasy, it made everything more realistic, down-to-earth and sort of mundane. Which might seem counterintuitive at first, especially in the fantasy genre. But it actually works, because it became more believable and relatable. Let's talk about specific elements that made The Witcher like that and how Netflix ruined it. In your typical epic fantasy, you usually have some powerful chosen one or really OP badass as the main hero. He's standing firmly on the good side and he's oftentimes destined to save the world from some ancient evil. In the Witcher books, Geralt is not a knight in shining armor. He's still a good guy, but he's sometimes forced to do morally grey things that your stereotypical hero just wouldn't have to do. He's also still a badass, but he's not OP and doesn't handle everything no problem. There's also a certain mage that teaches him a lesson beating him unconscious. If you know, you know. All of this makes Geralt way more relatable than some undefeatable Superman. 
it's clear that Netflix wanted to portray Geralt like a badass who can handle anything without a struggle. For example, when he's fighting the Bruxa in the first episode of second season, it seems that he doesn't even break a sweat and has her beaten before Nivellen stabs her from behind. But in the books, the Bruxa is giving Geralt incredibly hard time and he would probably be dead if it wasn't for Nivellen, who distracts her and saves Geralt who can then deal the final blow. Or another example. In the episode with the Striga, where she rips Geralt's neck open, so he's pretty badly wounded, he can talk no problem in the next scene with Triss. He wants to go to his horse immediately and it seems that he leaves Vizima right after that scene. In the books, he wakes up only to ask Velerat if the princess is fine and about his swords, but then he loses his consciousness again, which shows how bad the wound was and that he's still not fine. He then has to spend weeks in the temple of Melitele to heal his neck properly. So you see how they completely skipped this element for the most part and made Geralt into this badass who can handle anything without a problem? They did the same thing with Vesemir in the Nightmare of the Wolf. He's flying around on some grappling hook like Belmont from Castlevania swinging around on his whip. There's one scene where a griffin grabs Vesemir and takes him really high and when Vesemir kills the griffin, he just jumps off and catches some other flying monsters, using them to get to the ground. How lucky for him that they were there. This isn't the Witcher to me anymore. If this would happen in the books, Vesemir would be dead. And yes, Witchers are enhanced humans, but they shouldn't be able to fly around, no problem like Goku or whatever. Even the girl's parkour in the Witcher 1 cinematic was always too over the top for me. But this is way beyond that. And it's like that only because Netflix is trying to turn The Witcher from realistic and more ordinary fantasy to something more epic. In your typical epic fantasy, you usually have some evil force that's moved by some dark lord which wants to destroy the world. In The Witcher, there's nothing like that. There are just nations waging war against each other. Unfortunately, Netflix turned Nilfgaardians into these fanatical zealots for some reason and made them into exactly this evil force which wants to just destroy the rest of the world so they feel more like orcs or stormtroopers. They also couldn't help themselves and had to add Wolethmeir, which is exactly this ancient evil that waited for thousands of years to enact its revenge. There isn't really any villain in Blood of Elves, or to be precise, there is, but he isn't revealed yet. And it seems that Hollywood just doesn't know what to do when they don't have a villain, so they just made up some generic one, because they needed to have their climax showdown at the end of the season. But this just shows you how unoriginal and uncreative they are, because they have to follow their orthodox idea of a story structure. Your typical epic fantasy usually has giant oversized armors and swords, which can also be very over-decorated to the point that they are impractical. The landscape and nature also look very epic because every fantasy started copying this after Lord of the Rings popularized it with New Zealand. The soundtrack is very often epic orchestral music. The Witcher, on the other hand, has realistic and ordinary armors, which look like armors from games that are actually trying to be historically accurate. It has beautifully simplistic and realistic swords. There are realistic castles and architecture in general. The landscape and nature look like ordinary but beautiful countryside and woods of Central Europe, for the most part. I know that there are epic locations like Skellige or Kaer Morhen and many others. But I would say that like in our world, those are more unusual remote places and more of an exception to the rule. The soundtrack is using ordinary instruments and elements from folk music, instead of being purely orchestral epic music. It isn't all bad with Netflix. There are some armors that look pretty good, although it isn't anything special like with the games. It's a weird mix of medieval armors, armors from the Renaissance era and ugly fantasy crap. There's no consistency in the style, historical period or culture. And it's like that with everything. For example, most people use swords and other medieval weapons, 
but then there's few random people who use gladiuses from ancient Rome. Or with architecture, there's Southern Hill Memorial from the second season, which in real life is a gothic monastery called Fountains Abbey, and they've put an Egyptian obelisk in the middle of it. It's so out of place. In the first season they used Ogrogenet's castle for some shots of Southern Hill. It's a pretty normal looking ruin of a medieval castle in Poland. But they added this giant canyon with a huge bridge next to it and an epic mountainous landscape in the background, so it doesn't look like anything real anymore. In the second season Geralt and Ciri are traveling to the temple of Melitele, which is in the northern kingdoms, but it looks like a Hindu temple with Melitele looking like Kali. Again, so out of place. In Ophir, why not? But in Temeria? No. And then there are structures which look completely like something from epic fantasy, like Aretuza. When it comes to the landscape and nature, instead of using just Poland and maybe countries surrounding it, they are again using this epic look of northern England, or really weird locations like Canary Islands, because you know, nothing says Central Europe like islands near Africa. When it comes to the soundtrack, it's clear that they are just trying to copy the Percival vocals from The Witcher 3, but they do it way worse. It reminds me of the soundtrack from Black Sails a bit, but it just sounds depressing and forgettable. There's nothing special about it that would make me want to listen to it over and over, like it is with the peaceful songs from the soundtrack in the games. Believable village life oftentimes isn't depicted in fantasy genre, because mainstream fantasy stories are usually focused on the most important people from that world, so either on royalty and nobility or some chosen one and heroes surrounding him. And when there is some village, it feels very bland. The villagers usually aren't a big part of the story, and when they are mentioned, it feels like they are cardboard cutouts, or NPCs who are there just to give the hero some quest and move the plot further. Because The Witcher was essentially built on fairy tales, it evokes this folklore vibe. Sapkowski also gave villagers and the countryside character, and made them believable, so they feel like actual people which you could meet in Central Europe. Because Geralt as a witcher spends majority of his time traveling through countryside and he interacts with villagers a lot, the world has this rustic vibe. The way villagers behave in the books is very reminiscent of our own culture in Central Europe. What I mean is the spirit of countryside and village life, or folk life. The folklore, customs and traditions, superstitions, religiousness and spirituality, connection to the land, nature, agriculture, and so on. It's about the overall mentality. The way we can feel British mentality in the Shire, because Tolkien was inspired by his childhood in the British countryside, you can feel Polish and Slavic mentality throughout the countryside in The Witcher. And speaking about Lord of the Rings, that's probably the only other mainstream fantasy which portrays countryside and villagers well. And by countryside I mean the Shire, and by villagers I mean hobbits. The Shire is depicted as this beautiful, peaceful place, which locals love and the hobbits express their love for it many times. And you can feel the same peaceful atmosphere in The Witcher when it comes to the countryside. Of course, there's a dark atmosphere as well, but that doesn't mean things have to literally look dark and desaturated. Which brings me to the Netflix show, because that's exactly what they did. Filmmakers used the dark medieval filter so much that it became a meme. And it's no exception for Netflix. There's often no color and it's just shades of brown. They depicted the countryside in The Witcher like some dreary, disgusting place, which people like Yennefer or Marilka want to leave for a better life as soon as possible. I want more. I have to be more because I don't know what to do in Blaviken for the rest of my life except go to the boring old market. This is such a tired trope that's used for every Disney princess. I'm willing to bet that filmmakers from LA probably think that European countryside is disgusting, so that's why they wanted to convey it in the show. You can see that they don't understand our culture and why we love our countryside. 
but that just shows you that Netflix should have picked someone who's better suited for the job. So these are the main elements that differentiated The Witcher from all other epic fantasy worlds and made the world more mundane. Do you see how Netflix either reverted them back to being epic or did some other generic forgettable trope? To sum up this video and reiterate the point I wanted to make, I fell in love with The Witcher because it was so realistic and ordinary compared to the majority of generic epic fantasy worlds which are cluttering the mainstream at the moment. The Witcher looked really fresh and unique besides those worlds. But then came Netflix, they've taken this one of a kind unique fantasy and turned it into exactly the same generic epic fantasy crap which became totally uninteresting to me when I discovered The Witcher over 15 years ago. That's why I hate Netflix so much because they turn something I love into something I'm really tired of. And to be fair to Netflix, games did this too few times, but I hated it there as much as with the show. When I've played The Witcher 2 for the first time and saw the giant Lavalette castle being attacked by a big dragon, then the enormous forest surrounding Flotsam and the epic boss fight with the Chiron, it seems so wrong to me and so different from the pretty down-to-earth Witcher 1 that I just stopped playing the game in Flotsam and it took me years to realize that there are actually really cool elements about the game and finish it. Fortunately CD Projekt realized as well that one of the best things about The Witcher is the atmosphere of the mundane world which was captured so well in The Witcher 1 and they went back to it in many parts of The Witcher 3. But I still don't like the epic ending of the third game where everybody comes together to fight Wild Hunt. It feels like the last epic battle to save the whole world in the Lord of the Rings. But from what I've heard, the ending of The Witcher 3 had to be rushed because CD Projekt couldn't afford any more delays. But back to the main subject of this video. It probably seems to you that I don't like epic fantasy worlds. Don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against them. I actually like them if I'm in the mood for some epic high fantasy. Especially when playing board games, for example. I just mostly prefer more ordinary and believable fantasy since the time I discovered The Witcher. My main problem with epic fantasy worlds is that there are so many of them, especially in the mainstream, and they are so similar to each other. They've become the generic go-to fantasy worlds for Hollywood, because that's the main thing you see in the fantasy genre. But can we please have at least one mainstream fantasy that's more realistic, ordinary and mundane? No. Of course we can't because Hollywood needs to Americanize everything by making it more epic, bombastic and over the top. The reason why The Witcher feels so ordinary is because it's distinctively Polish and culture here in Central Europe just isn't trying to be so bombastic and over the top like what mainstream is used to with Hollywood. Most of our mainstream movies are just small dramas from the lives of ordinary people. And there was even a director who was trying to tell this to Netflix when they were shooting The Witcher, but they didn't listen to him, so he left. This is what he said. You see, in my perception, Eastern European literature has a completely different pace. It is no coincidence that Andrzej Sapkowski has so many storylines and characters. The producers set the task of setting the adaptation at an action pace and filling it with colorful special effects. That was their vision. My vision was very different and I tried to convey it to them, giving my arguments. Unfortunately, I was not considered convincing enough, so I decided to leave the project. I never understood why Hollywood has this need to Americanize everything. It's like with that Metro 2033 movie adaptation, which Hollywood wanted to set in the USA. Like, you have one of the most unique things you can find in the genre, but you want to change it so it looks like every other show or movie in the genre. Wouldn't you want to lean into the uniqueness and differentiate it yourself from everybody else to stand out from the crowd? But no, they would rather be like everybody else. It just seems so dumb to me. 
Can you imagine how successful The Witcher show could have been if they would lean into the historically accurate medieval look of castles, armors and weapons, make the landscape and setting look like an ordinary but beautiful countryside of Central Europe and to really show the mainstream audience how cool the folklore here can be? It would have been so unique and the show would stand out so much from all the generic crap that we've been getting from Hollywood productions lately. And I know that the biggest problem with Netflix show is that they are butchering the story, characters and dialogues from the books. But I think that aesthetics are the second biggest problem, because that's what creates the unique atmosphere of The Witcher. Well, they dug their own grave. I just hope that Netflix cancels the show as soon as possible now that most people have turned on them. Hollywood should just leave it to actual fans who understand the source material and know what made The Witcher great in the first place to portray the world well.